Hello folks, my name is Mike Cannon, part of the Avaya Serviceability Engineering Group. And today we're going to do a short video on how to configure a B179 SIP conference phone to register to a SIP Enablement Services server. Configuring the B179 to register to the SIP Enablement Services server, from this point on called the SES. Communication Manager and the SES have been up and running and handling calls for some time. So what's new to the solution is we're adding the B179 conference phone. You're going to have to make changes in three places. First in CM, we'll have to do an add station and a change off PBX telephone station mapping. In SES, we're going to have to add the B179 as a user. And in the B179, under settings, we're going to have to configure the SIP integration to SES. There'll be some things that'll be unique to your situation, but we'll be able to do the base integration today. So our first step is to log into the CM server. So we've logged into the Linux Shell's craft. I always like to start with the SW version. SW version will tell me my load. So I can see I'm at release 15.02.1, build 16.4, so 5.2.1. I can see the service packs that are loaded, as well as I see an SES update ID here. So this tells me this is an S8300C or D co-res server, which is what we happen to be using today. I can also see my messaging remote field updates. My next step is to type in SAT, enter my password, type in Windows 2000 terminal type, yes to suppress alarm origination. We're at the CM admin screen and we're going to type add station 2604. For phone type, we're going to change it to 9640 and that's because it's CM 5.2.1. For name, we're going to type B179 conference phone. We're going to tab the security code and enter 13579. We're going to go to slide 2 and we're going to go to page 3 and then we want to get to page 4. On page 4 we're going to tab down to button 4. At button 4 we're going to put in another call appearance. So call dash app, we'll tab and then we're going to save it. Our next step is to type change off PBX telephone station mapping 2604. We're going to tab to application and type in OPS for offboard proxy server. We're going to tab to phone number and put in the extension 2604. Under trunk selection, we're going to put in the trunk group 5. Under config set, this will depend on what you determine you're going to use. We're going to use 1. Under call limit, we're going to change that from 2 to 4. Both works, all works, none works, and we're going to change the location to 1. We're going to save this. Then we're going to type save trans and translations are saved in CM. We configured CM. Our next step is to go into SIP and Element Services. We HTTP into the SMI pages. We scroll up to administration. We scroll down to SES or SIP and Element Services. The first thing we're going to do is add a user. So we're going to open up the users tab. We're going to click add. Our primary handle will be 2604. Adding 2604 is the user ID. Our password we're going to put in, that same password will be used in the B179. We confirm our password. We tab the host, that'll be our home address we're going to register, so 201. We tab the first name, we're going to put B179 conf phone. Under last name, we're going to put room 2C. We'll use the default for the rest and tab to add communication manager extension. And we're going to check that box and we're going to click add. User ID 2604 edit, click continue. We're going to extension 2604 to add it to that CM, which is again 201 CM. We add it. We're going to continue. So as you can see, extension 2604, it shows the communication manager extensions for 2604.201 CM. And it shows the host or the home address, which is also .201. And that's because this is an 8300 co-res, right? Both CM and SES. Next, we're going to search registered users. And we're going to search both registered and provisioned. So we're going to click provisioned and then we're going to click search. And you can see we have four provisioned users. The bottom one is the B179. We have one registered user, 2602 Gary Collins. It's a 9620 SIP 2.6 software. Now we're going to need to configure to B179 so it can register. Our next step requires you to know the IP address of the B179. So either have a prior to or you've walked a customer through how to get it using their phone. So you HTTP to the B179's IP address 
and it'll come up with this login page with the profile being default. You're going to go to the drop down and you're going to select admin. You're going to enter the admin pin and you're going to click login. And it brings you to the status page. These are all status. Under device, you'll see the product name, B179, the serial number, the MAC address, and the application software on the B179. Our next step will be to click settings from the top toolbar. So we default the basics. First thing we want to look at is time and region. And you can see NTP by default is enabled, which is basically what you want for SIP. SIP really requires really good timing. But in my case, I don't have access to an NTP server. So we're going to turn it off. We're going to change the time to 12.33. We're going to next change the date from 2008 to August 1st, 2012. We're going to change our time zone from UTC 1 to UTC 5. And we're going to change our region from Sweden to USA. We're going to enable daylight savings time. And we're going to change our time zone to UTC minus 5. And the rest of the dates, I'm going to leave the way they are today. And we're going to click Save. When I click Save, the system is being restarted. This will be a very quick restart. The normal restart is approximately 30 seconds. This is about 7 seconds. So everything looks correct. My next step is to look at Media. Again, I like to look under media and what you see under media is your codex and the codecs are assigned a base priority and all four codecs default are assigned and, and you can leave all four in there because STP will kind of do the things it has to do to make sure it talks correctly to the other device. But I know for a fact that there's two of those I'm not going to use. So I'm going to take G722 and I'm going to change that to zero disabled and I'm going to do the same thing to G711 ALAW. I'm going to change you all to four. We'll make it the highest priority. And you really should always have at least two codecs in here. The other things in here are things you may use at a different time. We're not going to go into those today, but you might have need for those. So at this point, we're going to save it. And then we're going to move on to network. And really in network, all we're doing is checking. I've already statically assigned this. As you can see, DHP is off. But this is where you would uh, assign it if you're doing it via the web browser. And we're going to change it from a DHCP to a static. My IP addresses look good. As you can see, I don't really have DNS set up. So that'll have some impact later on. I'm not using any of the quality of services, nor am I using VLANs. But that's where you would set it up. Since I didn't make any changes on this page, we're going to go up to SIP. And SIP is really the meat of the integration with SES. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to enable the account and then we're going to put the account name. So I put 2604 room 2C and that's what will appear on the display on the phone itself. Under user I put 2604, the extension. Under register I put the IP address of my SIP server. Under proxy, proxy they really want to have a domain name. Well I don't have DNS working so it won't work. So my only option is to leave the proxy blank and under realm we're going to use the default. So under authentication name that has to match exactly what you put in the SIP enablement services server. So we have to put in 2604 and the password also has to match the password you put in for 2604 and SES. So I enter that password. At that point I'm scrolling towards the bottom. Some of these things you may use at a future time we're not going to go into them today. But I do want to change the transport protocol to TCP and more just to match what I have in SES. We're going to save this. If I'm looking at the B179 when I press save, I can see in the display it will say registering. And then the little registration box become full signifying that it's registered to a SIP server. Next we're going to log into SES and CM and see in those applications how we check and ensure it's registered and functioning. Now that we configured the integration 
for SES in the B179. We're going to go back to the SES server, go to Administration, click on SIP Enablement Services. Under SES, we want to go to Users. We're going to open up that tab. We're going to scroll down to Search Registered Users. And as well as Include Registered Users, we want to include Provisioned Users. So we're going to check that. And we're going to click Search. And what comes up in my case are the four provisioned users, of which two are now registered. You have Gary Collins, who was originally registered prior to, which is a 2602, and that's a SIP 2.6 software to 9620. And you have the 2604 Room 2CB139 conference phone, which is both provisioned and registered. So this is a good place to check to see if your device is registered. The last place I like to make a check is in the Communication Manager Admin or SAT screen. So we're going to type the command list trace station 2604 slash Q. So we're going to trace the conference phone. The conference phone, as you can see, just starts dialing and is dialing extension 2602. We see it sending its SIP invite, the trying, the ringing, and the 200 OK. So at this point, we know that it's talking to another extension which happens to be the other SIP phone, Gary Collins. At this point, we set up a basic configuration where the B179 is integrated and functioning with the SIP enablement services 5.2.1. Thank you for your time today. We welcome comments, questions, and feedback at mentoratavaya.com or on Twitter at Avaya Mentor. Or for more details or related information, please visit support.avaya.com. Again, thank you for choosing Avaya.